Here we are on the south boundary of Yellowstone um, and in these gorgeous sedge meadows. And this is a short and sweet version of identifying sedges that after, if you watch the Tony Resnicek video, Tony goes through all the details, all the ways to interpret morphological features for identifying a carex or a sedge, but it's actually the genus Carex, and if using a standard botanical key. Well, in our field guides that are online that you can download by regions, where we focus on the most common Carex or sedges, one of these booklets, I have a very simplified method uh, that uses either a key or a set of illustrations to get you to six groups and in these, oh actually five groups, and in each of the groups we give you the most common Carex in your region. I have to appreciate if there's 500 Carex in North America, for delineation purposes, most likely you're seeing the same, generally speaking, six sedges over and over and over again. For instance, this gorgeous sedge meadow really is made up of two carracks. It's dominated by the same two carracks, possibly three of them in here, but it's intumescence and aquatilus dominate this meadow. And I've gone down stream from here and these same sedges are on the boundaries of wetlands, boundaries of streams, and it's the same sedges. Similar in delineation. If you're in a forest type, you typically on a delineation see certain species. In meadows, you see other species. So in Tony's presentation, he went through a technical, all the features that I'm not going to review here, except a, a couple key things, and get you in our booklets, and we'll have inserts here so you don't have to try to zoom in on this. I have a key, or for those that don't like to read, I have illustrations of the five groups, and I'm going to talk about these, and then what you would do is find out which group you were in, and you would open to that group number, and there are the photos of your most common species. Now, I have to give credit where credit is due for this. I didn't invent this. So, this goes back to Bill Weber in Colorado. And Bill, I asked Bill, where did he come up with this? And Bill said he didn't take credit for it either. When he went to Sweden and was in the University of Umsla, where Linnaeus was at, in Sweden and Northern Europe, this is how they identify Carex. Not the traditional keys like what we use, but this key. So Bill, 50 plus years ago, brought that back and Bill published some things with these groups and I've narrowed this down to the most common sedges. So, let me get a, an example here. So, here's your typical carex, a uh, large carex, and these spikelets are the female parts. These very narrow tipped ones up here are the males. And you can have males and females on the same spikelet, but to identify a carex, much like grass, you got to know what the spikelet is, and then the little stem is called the peduncle. And between how this uh, spikelet, the female, and males are arranged, or how they either dangle or they're ascending, are the groups that we're going to look at real quick. So, with these spikelets, I'm going to go back to this guy, and the first group is a single spikelet over here, which this isn't. This is the multiple one in group number two. But this here is usually capitatum, and there's one or two other ones. These are high quality uh, sedges or carexes. You see these usually on moist logs and other places. You don't encounter them on a lot of delineation, but they're the single spike ones. The next group 
is the multi-headed ones. And this includes the group Ovalings, a very technical uh, tribe of carexes that you got to measure the perigenium. Remember, Tony talks about the perigenium the, that encases the ovule and the, uh, and the seed. And these get to be very technical, but they're multiple clusters. Like if I pull this apart, there's one, two, three, four, five, six clusters of spikelets forming that one head. Well, then we go to, let's take this guy and pull one of these out. And here, this is group number three, and it's actually in group number three. So we have the female spikelets, and on top, I have two or three male, the narrow spikelets. And here I actually have a male and a female on the same spikelet, but the male is on top. And so this would be group three, and you could look, you could key it, or you can look at the photo. And the key thing about group three is that the spikelets are more or less sessile, or sitting down on the stalk. There's a tiny little pedestal there. Now, as we go to group four and five, imagine, because I don't have them, and we'll insert them, take this and add a little pedicel that extends this, and they hang with a long pedicel that's equal in length to the spike that are longer, so they dangle down, okay? And that's group four. And then group five is just less than the length of the spikelet and they tend to be more erect and not dangle and we have so we have five easy groups and in each group we have like this is intumescence very common one we have um again you can see the spikelets males on top in this same uh, meadow, oh here it is, we have a quadalus, Carex aquatilus, which, here we go, we have the females, and we have the males at the top, and so what I'm doing is saying, you got a Carex, you know you have a Carex by a perigenium, that sac that en encompasses the um, uh, the seed, and and you don't have to worry about whether it's two styles or three styles. It's a very simplified method. You determine: Do I have a single spikelet or multiple spikelets clustered? Group one, group two, group three. I have females with males on top that are sessile. I have females that have long dangling pedicels like so, that's group four, and shorter ones like this that are group five, and you go to one of those groups in the key, and all you have to do is go to that group, like here, group five, and you would get the most common ones in each of these groups. Uh, group three, Aquatilus is in here, Utriculata, the ones I have for examples. I have another one. Here's another multi-clustered one, Carex canescens, and it's multi, and it's common everywhere. And you go to group two, and it would be in your key. So, in a quick review, I'm in the Cyperaceae. I'm in the graminoids, the grass likes. The grasses we know have lemmas, paleas, glooms. We've gone through that video, or you can go to the grass, common grass video, and look at all those parts. In the Cyperaceae, we have an ovule with a, a scale and parts in three, three males usually, three stigmas for the females, and the ovule. And in Carex, that ovule is encased in a perigenium, a sac that surrounds it. So I'm in the genus Carex. I have one of five groups. 
all single spiked, multiple clusters. Here I have female spikes, males on top, sessile. Here I have long pedicels where the females dangle down as group four and group five. I have a short pedicel and these typically in these groups are where there's various bladder sedges with the very large perigenia that float on water. And so we will uh, put all this uh, as inserts and our keys will be online as usual. And so this was just the quick and dirty way, but a very easy way to learn the common carexes for delineation purposes.